To those out there who are angered by YouTubers showing off multiple graphics cards in a single video, you're gonna wanna look away now. If you've ever thought about running your own servers for home or business use, but don't wanna deal with the headaches of maintaining hardware, why not let Linode host your services for you? They make it simple to deploy and manage your own cloud infrastructure, with solutions ranging from a single shared CPU to massive multi-core virtual machines. You can even add in dedicated enterprise GPUs for machine learning. With shared CPU plans starting at as little as $5 per month and scaling up to as high as you need to go, you'll be able to find a hosting plan that fits your needs. They also have 24-7, 365 support available, regardless of your plan size. That's a better support plan than I have on my personal server rack, I can tell you that much. Visit linode.com slash craft computing and get a $100 60-day credit just for signing up for a new account. That's linode.com slash craft computing. And thanks to Linode for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. I have a problem, and admittedly, it is very much a first world problem. My three GTX 1070 Ti's just aren't quite performing up to snuff in my 64-core Epic cloud gaming server. To be fair, I am using these cards in a way they were never intended. That is, splitting each into four individual virtual GPUs and running a total of 12 virtual machines, all playing games at the same time in a single PC with consumer graphics cards. But when you consider the specs on the GTX 1070 with its 2400 CUDA cores and 8GB of video memory, you split that four ways and what you're left with is around 650 CUDA cores each with 2GB of video memory. Which means when I split all of these up, what I'm left with is a GTX 1050. So if 1080p at low to medium settings is your jam, you could totally run 12 virtual machines on these GTX 1070 Ti's. But these were never meant to be my long-term solution. They were more of a proof of concept of putting this all together. That's why I'm already upgrading them. So it's out with the old and in with the new. This is the GTX Titan X Pascal. And while it is the same architecture as the GTX 1070 Ti, it increases the performance by nearly 50%. Compared to the 2,432 CUDA cores on the GTX 1070 Ti, the Titan Nexus have 3,584, or around 47% more. We've also increased the video memory from 8GB to 12GB, meaning that when I split these four ways, instead of being left with a GTX 1050, we're going to get something a little bit closer to the performance of a 1060 3GB. The Titan X Pascal has a base clock of 1417 MHz and a boost clock of 1531. However, anything below around 1800 MHz is really seen as a letdown on these cards, as GPU Boost does a fantastic job keeping them in the upper frequency range. Swapping out the GTX 1070 Ti's in my cloud server is actually pretty simple, as I already have all my virtual machines configured and drivers installed. The only step I need to do is swap the vGPU profiles from 2GB to 3GB and fire up the virtual machines. So have I finally achieved the cloud gaming server of my dreams? One CPU, three consumer GPUs, all running 12 virtual machines simultaneously and gaming at 1080p high settings. Yes, it ran fantastic for about two minutes. And now we come to the part of the show where I have to talk about my second first world problem. And that's that my Titan X Pascals are thermal throttling in the cloud gaming server, even when running inside of an air conditioned server rack. Now, while I'm sure the lot of you are not a fan of blower style coolers, I actually specifically wanted this style of cooler, mainly because the airflow in a server is front to back and all the air blows out the back anyway. What I didn't want happening is air just recirculating in the case with nothing to actively push it out. So a blower fan will take the hot air from inside the case, blow it over the GPU and exhaust it out the back. And that should have been enough. The problem is, inside the server, these are pretty much stacked one on top of each other, and there's not enough room between the cards to get air into the blower and through the GPU. So after about two minutes, these are slowing down to around one gigahertz and running at 87 degrees Celsius, which is far from the results that I was hoping to get. My 1070 Ti's with the exact same cooler design, running in the exact same server slots, managed to run at 82 degrees Celsius, but maintain a boost clock of 1875 megahertz. So what's the difference here? First off is the amount of power used by each of these cards and subsequently the amount of heat generated by them. The 1070 Ti can consume up to 150 watts at full load, whereas the Titan X Pascals can use up to 250 watts or around 40% more. 
So more power equals more heat equals more difficult to cool. But that's not the worst part of this situation. You see, Nvidia also locked the fan speed on the Titan X Pascal to just 50% in the firmware, likely in an effort to sacrifice top-end performance for acoustics in professional workstations. GTX Titans were never meant to be installed in servers, nor were they ever meant to be stacked one on top of each other, suffocating the cards below. Typically in servers, you'll see cards with more of this design, with a passive heatsink on them, relying on server chassis airflow to push air through the heatsink and out the back of the case. And the third issue ties really well into the other two, and that's that NVIDIA decided to start encrypting firmware in the Pascal series and newer cards, meaning that you can't just modify the fan speed or GPU boost behavior inside the firmware. What comes on the card is what you get. Now, if I were running these cards in a Windows workstation or an Ubuntu server with an X environment, I could very easily modify the fan speed with software. However, since we are using a modified vGPU driver, there's no such thing as fan control because no GPU with vGPU support ever came with a fan installed on it. So what does one do when all software solutions fail? You dial up a slightly more direct approach, and that's what I have here. This nifty little cable will adapt the fan on the GPU to be able to plug in directly to a fan header on your motherboard, no modifications required. Meaning that when I am done using these Titan X Pascals, the process is completely removable without any soldering. And now for the slightly bad news. I have to disassemble all three of these cards to plug in the fan cable because there's no direct access to the fan header. So that might take a while. And I also haven't quite figured out how I'm going to get the cable out of the card because the shroud comes all the way to the edge, meaning there's no gap to get this thing out. So uh, let's go solve some problems. All right, there we go. Three modified Titan X Pascal cards. So you can see I was able to utilize one of the unused power supply connector slots to uh, route that cable out of. And honestly, that turned out cleaner than I was hoping for. Uh, I was expecting to maybe have to use a Dremel somewhere, but no, there turns out to be just the right size slot in the back of these cards. Overall, that was a pretty simple process. Take the backplate off of the card, take the PCB off of the heatsink, and then in the back of the heatsink, there happened to be a little slot where I could hide that PWM connector, and then the aforementioned slot in the back of the card to route it out of. But just real quick, I do wanna demo what the fan speed was on these cards and what the fan speed potential is when we hook it up to a full 12 volts. So uh, here goes this. And right about there is where this card normally runs. I can feel a little bit of air coming out there, but again, these were optimized for silence rather than performance. And here, with all the dust coming out of it, is what these fans are actually capable of doing at a full 12 volts. So hopefully that will solve all of my cooling issues. Only thing left to do is go plug these into the server and see what a difference it made. <laughs> That's pretty fun. All right, there we go. Three for three. All right, let's go plug these in.
with the cards installed in the server and the fans blowing at 100%, let's go ahead and dive onto the server and see if it made a difference. First off, I'm gonna go into my SSH session and type in NVIDIA-SMI, and we can see that all three cards have 0% on the fan speed, as expected, because there's not a fan plugged into them anymore, and they are idling between 32 and 36C which is actually pretty significant as before they were idling in the mid to high 40s. So almost a 10 degree delta from the onboard PWM controller to controlling them with the motherboard. But of course, idle temps are not why we're here. You want to see actual performance numbers. So let's go ahead and fire up a couple virtual machines. I'm just going to fire up six, so two VMs on each card for the moment. Now, even though we are splitting the memory on these cards, we are not actually partitioning or dedicating CUDA cores on the GPUs to each individual virtual machine. Rather, that is handled dynamically. So if you only have one virtual machine running, you could in theory use up to 100% of the CUDA cores, but only three gigabytes or two gigabytes of video memory, whatever you have assigned to that virtual machine. To put these cards through their paces, I'm just going to log into each virtual machine, fire up Heaven Benchmark, run it at 1080p with high quality and moderate tessellation. Go ahead and hit run and start the next one. All right, machine number two. 1080p, high settings, moderate tessellation, go. And so on and so forth. And machine number six, go ahead and run. And there goes our last machine. All right, let's go ahead and jump back over to NVIDIA SMI and let's see where our temperatures are at now. All right, moment of truth, NVIDIA-SMI. All right, looks like at the moment we've hit 79 degrees Celsius on GPU one, 77 degrees Celsius on GPU two, and I'm assuming number three is still working on climbing up as it's only at 66 degrees Celsius. But we are under 100% GPU utilization. All right, let's go ahead and refresh our page a couple of times here. Uh, we've climbed to 83 Celsius and 74 Celsius, but we seem to be starting to level off just a little bit. Yeah, 83, 75. But perhaps the most important result, let's go ahead and check our GPU frequencies. And that's done by typing in NVIDIA-SMI Demon for device monitoring. That's just a little snippet of all three GPUs, and we can see our GPU frequency is hovering between 1740 and 1780 megahertz, which is, again, not too bad. I'd expect right around 1800 megahertz in a standard desktop, so we're certainly within that range. Temperatures, slightly higher than I would like them, although 83 degrees is still acceptable according to NVIDIA for Pascal series cards. But yeah, all three cards are at 99% utilization and temperatures are sitting between 76 and 83 degrees. I am pretty darn happy with those results. Now, obviously there's a lot more that I could cover in this video, but I feel like it's getting a little long-winded at this point. If you are interested in the cloud gaming server project, go ahead and click right up here. And I recommend start watching around part nine when I actually got the thing working. Don't worry, benchmarks for the Titan X Pascal in vGPU mode are coming, but it does take a little bit of time to get that all together because benchmarking one PC and one graphics card in eight games is bad enough. Benchmarking 12 PCs with multiple graphics cards, multiple different split modes and multiple configurations depending on how the benchmarks land, that's a little bit more complicated. So stick around, those benchmarks are coming. But that's all I'm gonna have for you in today's video. If you liked this one, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and wanna help support me in what I do, there are a number of different ways to do that. First off, you can head on over to craftcomputing.store and pick yourself up a pint glass or a t-shirt. If you saw any parts in today's video you wanna pick up for yourself, I will have Amazon and eBay affiliate links down in the video description. And if you want access to my exclusive Discord server, head on over to Patreon or Floatplain. Again, links are down in the video description. That's gonna do it for me in this one, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is one of the most abused cans I have ever received that is still sealed. So thank you, John, for packing it well. From Treehouse Brewing, this is the Double Shot Imperial Stout, 9.2%. Uh, I say this a lot, but even this time I am shocked by how dark this beer is.
Even the head on it is super, super dark. <laughs> this is a little undercarbonated and almost syrupy sweet, like Hershey's chocolate syrup. Featuring coffee from Peru, Colombia, and Ethiopia, it puts forth a complex blend of flavors featuring chocolate-covered cherry, caramel frosting, toasted hazelnut, and molten toffee. I was gonna say, this is kind of like Hershey's chocolate and cherry. That's what I'm getting. And I wish I would have said that before I read this because you're not gonna believe me, but that is absolutely what I got from here. Um, they're going for a very sweet beer. And to be fair, this is a very, very sweet beer. As I said, it's it's syrupy sweet. It's, it's candy and cake sweet. That said, I'm not getting any coffee. And what I'm getting is more of like a, a black chocolate cake mousse frosting. Uh, you put all those together, you know what I'm talking about. Um, well, it's more of like a mousse frosting kind of flavor towards the back end. I'm not getting caramel. I'm not getting hazelnut. I'm not getting toffee. So chocolate covered cherry in an American stout, I gotta say they nailed it. Uh, but I would have called this more of like a, a German chocolate cake rather than double shot American stout. Freehouse Double Shot Gold. Double Shot Gold is an American stout infused with a blend of our favorite recent roots from the Treehouse Coffee Program. Inspired and characterful, Double Shot Gold showcases the heightened potential of purpose intent applied from grain to glass in the beer making process. Okay, whatever that last sentence means. Yeah, I'm not getting toffee, I'm not getting caramel, but this is basically German chocolate cake in a glass. Going in with that mindset, I actually like it.